both Europeana and the DPLA have their own metadata schemas that have been developed specifically for those projects. Europeana's is called the Europeana Data Model, EDM, and DPLA's is called the DPLA Metadata Application Profile, MAP. I'm not going to get into detail on those two metadata schemas for two reasons. On the one hand, they're specific to the DPLA in Europeana. They're designed and have been created specifically for those two projects, so they're not standards, which means they're not widely used outside of those two projects. And I'm trying to stick here to technology that has wide use and applicability in the world across domains. And on the other hand, getting into detail in DPLA, the DPLA and Europeana's metadata schemas would be slightly redundant because they're based on technologies that we've already looked at, Dublin Core and RDF specifically. Though, of course, I will link to documentation on the Europeana data model and the DPLA's metadata application profile if you're interested in reading more about them. What both the DPLA and Europeana share, however, and share, I should add, with many other web services that make use of metadata records, is that they use what's called the Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting. In other words, OAI PMH. Now, the Open Archives Initiative is a project to develop and promote the use of standards for interoperability on the web, with the goal of making dissemination of web content simpler. But content can be a fuzzy word, right? Content in the context of the web can mean web documents, but as we've seen, it can also, of course, mean metadata. So one of the standards that the OAI has developed is the Protocol for Metadata Harvesting, PMH. Now, before we get into how OAI PMH works, which we will do in a moment, let's review some of the concepts that are central to OAI PMH that are things that we've already mostly talked about already. And I've lifted these straight out of the OAI PMH documentation. So first, we have a resource. A resource is some object, some physical or digital object about which metadata is created. Next, we have a record. A record is a set of statements in some metadata schema, a set of statements or assertions, whatever term you want to use, about a resource. Now, the important thing to remember here is that a record is metadata expressed in a single metadata schema. Remember the one-to-one -one principle, the one-to-one one Remember the one-to-one -one principle that we talked about way back with Dublin Core, where you want to have one and only one metadata record for a single resource. But, and we talked about this later, that makes sense only for a single metadata schema. You can have different records, different metadata records for the same resource in different metadata schemas. You can describe the Mona Lisa, for example, in Dublin Core and CDWA and the Europeana data model and the DPLA metadata application profile. You can have multiple metadata records as long as each one is in a different metadata schema because they're all different ways of describing the same object. But you only want one and only one metadata record per schema. Now, the unique identifier is a name or address for a resource, or a name or address for a metadata record. A unique identifier uniquely identifies 
an object, some object, according to some addressing scheme. OAI PMH requires that unique identifiers be URIs, uniform resource identifiers, which we've talked about a little bit before. In other words, a unique identifier for OAI PMH has to look like a URL. Now, an important point is that both the resource and the metadata record has unique identifiers. And equally importantly, those are different unique identifiers if the metadata record is a separate object, if it's a separate file, what I've been calling a linked record. The resource and the metadata record are two separate objects and so have two separate unique identifiers to indicate their location on a network such as the web. Now, I don't want to get into how HTTP works, the hypertext transfer protocol, which of course is the protocol that powers the web. Uh, but in brief, when you type a URL into your web browser, your browser, and let's say here's your browser, with you sitting at, sitting at your browser, and there's you, your browser makes a request to a server out there in the cloud. That sort of looks like a flower, but pretend it's a cloud. Um, your browser makes a request to a server out there in the world for the file at that particular URL, and the server's response, hopefully, is to return that file. Now, a repository is a collection of metadata records, like DPLA or Europeana is a collection of metadata records. OAI PMH requires that a repository be able to respond to requests about the metadata records that it contains. And then a harvester is an algorithm that makes those requests to a repository and collects the metadata records that are returned from the repository. This diagram is a diagram of how OAI PMH works, where all those pieces that we've just been talking about fit together. So first of all, the data provider owns resources. And note here that it says metadata plus resources. So the resources can be the original physical objects or digital objects and metadata records about those resources. OAI PMH is not particularly concerned about the resources themselves. OAI PMH is interested in the metadata records about them. So for example, the data provider could be the Stockholm Museum of Ethnography or the University of Utah from the previous examples. So the data provider has metadata records about the resources that it maintains, and those metadata records must be what's called exposed. Metadata records are exposed, which means that they're accessible for harvesting on the open web. Then the service provider here could be the DPLA or Europeana. The service provider has a harvester, and the harvester makes a request to the data provider using HTTP which is, of course, the same protocol that your web browser uses to request data uh, from servers about web pages. The harvester makes a request using HTTP to request data about metadata records. The simplest request is one called get record, which is exactly what you might think it is. It retrieves an individual metadata record. It gets a record 
from the data provider. There are other OAI PMH requests, but let's not worry about those just yet. The harvester makes a request to the data provider, and the data provider replies with a copy of the metadata record, just like when your browser requested this video from Coursera's server. Coursera's server replied with a copy of this video, which is, of course, how you're watching it right now. So in this way, the service provider builds up a collection of metadata records by making requests to one data provider after another and getting back metadata records from multiple data providers. And this is why, of course, DPLA and Europeana must have many, many partners because the idea is to cut across institutions to provide a portal to the resources maintained at many institutions, not just one. The DPLA, or Europeana, as a service provider, then, can build web services on top of this collection of metadata records. For example, the timeline or the map in DPLA, because once you have a set of metadata records, you know what institutions own what resources. You can put that on a map. You can map the names of places represented in the metadata records. You can put the dates of creation of those resources on a timeline. You can create exhibits that pull together resources with similar subjects, etc. The sky's the limit. Your imagination is your limit for the kinds of services that you can build on a large enough collection of metadata records. So, now let's revisit the question from the start of the previous video, which is what do you do with all this metadata once you have it? On the one hand, especially if the metadata is embedded in your web documents, you feed it to discovery tools like search engines, as in our cookie recipe example. On the other hand, if the metadata records are separate from the resources they're describing, you expose those metadata records and let them be harvested by service providers, and you let those service providers build services on top of yours and others' metadata records. In both cases, you've made your metadata public without making the resources that the metadata is about public. So you maintain control over your own content, but having your metadata out there in the world helps people to find your resources and drives traffic back to your site. 